Hey, Joe Gilder here. Today we're going to talk about how to take two vocals and align them without needing any extra software, just using the tools you have inside of Studio One. Let me sing a couple of vocals real quick. Hang on. 30 years doing this same old thing, always wondering what's in it for me. What's in it for me? All right, let's do a second one. 30 years doing this same old thing, always wondering what's in it for me? What's in it for me? All right, so I'm <laughs> I'm pretty good at singing things the same way every time, but I tried to change those up a little bit so I can demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So whether it's harmonies or background vocals, or in this instance, just a straight up regular old fashioned double, sometimes you'll get tracks that don't line up perfectly and it can sound a little bit sloppy. The perfect scenario is you just record it again and get it right. But there are situations where either that's not possible because this is as good as it's going to get or the singer has already gone home and now you're mixing and you don't have time to go back and redo it. Whatever the case may be, Studio One to the rescue with using some of the time stretching stuff inside of Studio One that maybe you haven't checked out before. It's real simple. You don't have to know a lot of technical stuff to make it happen. I'm going to show you how it works. So let's take a look at these vocals. Let's just listen to both of them real quick and see how they're matching up 30 years doing this same old thing always wondering what's in it for me okay so i intentionally sang this word a little bit later same old thing right that's not good that's that's what we would call here in the business sloppy so we want to match this second one to this first one so the first one just for the sake we'll make it green the second one we'll make it red red for wrong and now it's almost like christmas but what are we talking about here? Now, one of the ways you can do it is you can like chop up the audio. I'm going to turn off Snap to Grid. You could do something like this. You could chop up the audio and then you could slide this one back. And now they look more lined up. This is the word the or for. Same old thing. Same old thing. It kind of works. But sometimes they sing it longer. Um, and it's not a matter of just, it wasn't, it, it, doesn't, it wasn't that they sang it the exact same way just later, but they sang it slightly different like lengths, like maybe this one. For me. Like I, it, that's totally different. If I slide it back, it's probably not going to work, right? Let's slide this back. For me. Okay, it kind of worked. But let's assume that that didn't work for the sake of our argument here. I want to show you, this is a tool you can use to quickly fix timing issues inside of Studio One. First thing we're gonna do is come up to this button here in our menu up top. It's labeled Audio Bend. That's gonna open up this section. And the first thing you wanna do is click this Show Hide Bend Marker little eyeball. What you'll notice that does to your audio, it makes it kinda, of, the color kind of inverted. And this is the view where we can see audio bend markers. What do audio bend markers look like? Well, if we select the Bend tool, we can now click here, and if we click and drag this, we're like moving the audio around. More specifically, if we click here and here and now drag this middle one, we're stretching and compressing the audio in real time. And it changes color based on how much or how little it's being stretched or compressed. So as we stretch it, it turns red and more red. As we compress it, it turns green and more green. What's happening here? Well, let me just play it for you because it kind of sounds silly if we play it by itself. 30 years doing this same old thing, always want 30 years doing this same old thing, always. Right? It's kind of silly, but what it's doing is it's taking all of that audio, instead of editing and chopping things up, it's literally squishing and stretching and moving it so that it goes to the right place. However, let's, um, let me show you a couple of things here before we dive in. The first thing you're going to want to make sure is before you do any bend markers that you check which time stretch mode you're using. This is kind of the algorithm under the hood. There's one for drums, one for sound, and one for solo. Solo means a monophonic instrument, meaning like a vocal, a bass guitar, things like that. that are one note at a time, choose solo. If it's any other sound other than drums, then choose the sound for like guitars and things like that. So I've got that selected. I'm not going over here. I'm not doing the quantize thing. You've maybe seen me talk about that before. And I'm not even going to have it detect and create a bunch of bend markers. I'm just going to go move the things that need to be moved. 
I'll show you exactly what I mean here. Let's hit play and hear what's happening on this phrase again. 30 years doing this same old thing. All right, this last word is messed up. So from here to here. Same old thing. Same old thing. So same was good. And then old is where things started to fall apart. Old and thing got janky. We need this to come over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to this bend tool here, which by the way, if you hover over it, it'll tell you what it is and which number on your keyboard to press to select that. That is seven. And we're going to make a few marks. First mark I'm going to make is here at the beginning where things start to go off. I just click here and it creates this little vertical line. Then I'm going to kind of mark off each section. So the beginning of thing, the TH looks like this. Anytime you see a TH or an S, they kind of look squiggly like that. So I'm going to mark that because I want to move that for sure. And then we're going to mark the end of this phrase as well. And then we're just going to click on these marks that we just made. These are kind of our anchor points. And now we're just going to move them around to line things up. So this needs to line up with this. So I'm going to click and drag until it does. And now this is red because it's been stretched. And if you stretch things too far, it sounds wonky. Uh, we're going to bring this over to line up here. So you'll see that we've lined up the, the TH sounds together. Now this one looks a little bit stretched. We can see this phrase ended here. This one ends all the way here. So we can go back a little bit to fix that. And then we'll, you'll notice we stretch the rest of the audio. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to stretch this. I'm going to move this back over to make sure it's lined up with the rest. When it goes back gray, it's back to where it was. So now we've only affected these green and yellow bits here. But if we go and listen now, they should, without even listening, be lined up. Let's see. 30 years doing this same old thing. Oh, 30 years doing this same old thing. Pretty cool. Now, when you shorten things, if there's a vibrato, it's going to make that vibrato a little bit faster. So this, there may be situations where this doesn't work. But in that instance, especially with music playing over the top of it, I think it works just fine. This same old thing. Works just fine. And you can like massage these endpoints around a little bit to give it a little bit more variation if you want. Because part of what makes a double work is the fact that it's not exactly precise, but we want them not to sound sloppy. This same old thing, always wondering what's in it for me. Okay, so I messed up that last part. Let's do it again. Let's see what happens. What's in it for me? In it for me. In it for me. So the four, this one here looks good. Just kind of, kind of mark each spot and line these up a little bit better. You can really just line up the blobs. I move this one over to here, this one over to whoops, this one over to well shoot I must have added a second one. There we go. This one to here, that one's good, and then this looks like where I said me here. Uh, so we're gonna drag this over to there. That looks about right. And we're going to separate these over here. I make two here just so I'm not stretching this. Any stretching happening here is just silent, so it's going to be fine. Let's see how that sounds. Always wondering what's in it for me. That is bonkers to me that that worked. And we can stretch this one a little bit too. Always wondering what's in it for me. And this one, even, even this one, you could say, oh, he held it out a little too long. All right, just... Pull that back a little more. Always wondering what's in it for me. What's in it for me? I am still flabbergasted. I remember 20 years ago learning how to do this with a expensive piece of plug. I don't even know if it exists anymore. That you had to buy that even allowed you the ability to do this time stretching stuff that's happening. But it is wild to me. Now, once you've done this, Studio One is actively stretching and compressing that every time it plays. So you may want to do this afterwards. Take this and duplicate it, and then take this duplicated layer and click on it and just hit Command B, and it'll render that as a new piece of audio. You can always get back to the original here if you want, um, but now you're just, if we kind of close this lane, now we're just looking at the original. And it looks, it doesn't look all j messed with now. It just now sounds like it needs to sound. 30 years doing this same old thing. Always wondering what's in it for me. 
You can't tell me you could hear that I did some time stretching there. It's doubled already, so there's already little bits of phasiness happening, which is all good. Um, and now it lines up just fine. Now, there are plugins out there that'll do this automatically for you. That's great if you want to go for it. But in case you didn't know, this is available in Studio One. And guess what? This works for drum hits and bass lines. And specifically for me, places where I just need to clean up the timing on a few spots, I'm not needing to go literally bar by bar, although it'll do that as well. It's a very cool tool. If you're not familiar with it, go play around with it a little bit. You might find that you just love it. And just, just so you know, one last thing. If you mess things up, you go in, you move things around, and you think, I have made a huge mistake. Let's switch back to that previous one here. Um, there's a beautiful button up here called Restore. So select the audio that you've been working on and just say, oh, for the love of all things holy, please restore this. It'll restore timing. So I go boop, and it's back to where it was. So now we can actually compare the original, which was this. 30 years doing this same old thing. Always sloppy and gross to this one. 30 years doing this same old thing. It's glorious. What a time to be alive. Thanks for watching. My name's Joe. I'll see you in the next one.